This is me, and this is a Microsoft engineer that worked on making this computer. See, I was flown to Sydney to the Aussie headquarters of Microsoft, where I talked with designers and engineers about making the new Surface devices. Ever since childhood, I've been a massive computer nerd, so the experience alone is a dream come true. But now, as someone that customizes tech, meeting the humans that make tech is so exciting. Today, I wanna to share with you the insights that I learned from the designers and engineers while sharing my actual experience in using the new Surface Pro at home. Full transparency, Microsoft offered to sponsor today's video. And I said, only if I can share my complete and honest opinion, because whilst there are pros, there are cons I've discovered. And they said, yes. So today's video is sponsored by Microsoft. Oh, that was satisfying. From the moment we walked in, they really emphasized the design. Not necessarily from the looks, but the way that you interact with it. And one of those ways is magnets. They brought with them one of their testing machines, which showed how they could test different magnet strengths at varying angles of tilt. They want to ensure that the keyboard attaches correctly no matter which angle you tilt the kickstand to. At home, I put it to its max 165 degrees, and it still snaps in place when it's pretty much flat. And for the pen, I believe Carlos said they tested over 30 different strengths. They brought three for us to demo. And it was really interesting to try the different strengths because it needs to be strong enough that it won't fall off when you put it in and out of a backpack, but weak enough you can take it off the back of the tablet to start writing. And if I try and put it back the wrong way, you can see in slow motion that it flips the pen over, which is pretty cool. And that pen is more feature packed than I thought as inside there's a haptic motor, which will vibrate in certain apps to simulate the feeling of writing on paper with different types of markers. I don't know, it clicks. Oh, that's cool. Surprisingly, different clicks of the pen's end can open different app shortcuts that you've set. You can write with pressure sensitivity, shade on an angle, the button on the side will make selections, and you can use the top as an eraser. And the flat profile reminds me of a carpenter's pencil. What I don't like about the Surface Slim Pen is it has a non-replaceable battery. So previous Surface Pens had things like a quadruple A battery that could be removed and swapped out, whereas now we've got the convenience of magnetic wireless charging, but when it degrades to a point that becomes unusable, well then you just gotta buy a whole new pen. This is partially made from sugarcane. Yeah, like the crop that's grown in a field. Microsoft takes sugarcane waste, creates pellets, and then spins it with other materials to create their soft touch Alcantara fabric on the back of the keyboard. I also love that it's just on the back now because it used to be on the palm rest side of the keyboard, which if you've ever looked at a used one, you knew it was used because your hands, oils and stains were just like completely get it grotty. Now Robin also told us that 100% of the aluminium that's used for the CNC housing is recycled. The chips that remain from the milling process are sent to a factory, melted back down into an aluminium billet block, and they CNC from that block. They then take those chips, send it back to the factory, it gets melted down, they come back and get another block, repeat the process. Now don't confuse that with post-consumer recycled aluminium, like a tin can that you put in your bin and gets collected by a recycling truck. That's a different process. This is industrial recycled material, which they don't have to do. It's good to see that they're doing it. Now I asked Robin, the head engineer, if there was other benefits to this being aluminium. She said that the previous surface lineup being magnesium had to be painted, whereas this being aluminium that's anodized is more sustainable. And it's also a better thermal conductor than magnesium. So this aluminium housing gets rid of all the heat. There's no fans. The Surface Pro 12 has zero fans, which is really interesting. Um, the laptop, however, does have fans that are really cool demo showing the airflow coming in and out from the same back vents. She said they angled the exhaust so it doesn't like suffocate itself with the hot air going back in. And the new laptop lid is actually punched from aluminium sheet metal, which isn't recycled. Apparently they tried, but recycled aluminium will break for these sheer bends and forces that they put it under. So they only do recycled for the CNC milling where you're chipping away and for the bending, it's virgin material. I thought that was really cool to learn and know about. And the battery inside is 100% recycled cobalt, which is cool. I didn't even know there was a thing that you could do. But what I don't like is that this is glued together 
and not screwed together. Because if I want to replace that battery, I need specific tools or at least make sure that I'm not prying too deep when I pull apart the screen from the housing. And then I have to buy their specific adhesive kit to reseal the screen to the housing. Now, I asked one of the lead designers, why is this glued together and not screwed together? And he said it's to do with the look and feel. And he said this exactly, but my interpretation is that it would have to be thicker to have screws because you'd have to screw the display panel onto a frame and then screw that into the housing. And then on the back, you would have screws. So they have to try and like hide them because pretty things sell easier. And there's no doubt they spent a lot of time on the aesthetics, simply selecting and dyeing materials to match the violet and ocean color palettes to release along with the standard platinum silver. So let's look at the tech we can see on the outsides before discussing the insides. Up front, they put stereo speakers. They're two watts, but plenty powerful for a device that's in front of you, especially since they're front facing. On the side, we have two USB-C, USB 3.2 ports with 10 gigabits per second, and they do support fast charging. I love that they ditched their proprietary magnetic connector, which you can see on my older Surface laptop. There's dual cameras, a 1080p front-facing webcam with Windows Hello, so you can authenticate with your face. Flanking it is dual microphones, and on the back, a 10 megapixel rear camera in the corner, so you can take photos in portrait or landscape without covering it. As I said before, the kickstand has a 165 degrees full friction hinge, but underneath, we're now missing the SSD. SSD door. Previous Surface Pro had a little door to access the removable SSD, but now you have to pick between a 256 gigabyte or 512 gigabyte non-removable storage. Oddly, one terabyte of storage is only offered through the business website. Thankfully, their laptops still have a user replaceable SSD. The display is obviously a 12 inch touchscreen, but it goes up to 90 Hertz refresh rate and has a 220 pixel per inch resolution. The panel is LCD with standard dynamic range and up to 400 nits maximum brightness, but it is individually color calibrated at factory for decent colors. Most importantly, the bezels are thick enough to actually hold the device with your thumbs on them. Awesome. And they're also uniform, which makes them look great. If I put the specs side by side to the previous Surface Pro 11, which had a 13 inch screen, you can see it's not only a smaller, but also lower performance offering. Now I've got some issues with the processor on the inside, which we'll get to in a moment, but something I actually don't have any issue with is the keyboard and trackpad like this. I really like it. They had a scaled up version of the new spring-loaded hinge mechanism. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing an accordion or something. You just like springs in and out, but that gives it some like slack when it wants to close or be flipped all the way around. Uh, the spring load just pulls up any slack. The cool thing is when you flip it all the way around, it magnetizes to the back of the surface. So it doesn't just flop around in your hand. It also disables the keyboard and trackpad as expected. So you don't accidentally type stuff when holding it in this format. As for the keyboard itself, they had a 10 times scale scissor switch and keycap to show us how the mechanism worked. Carlos said there's a 0.2 millimeter dish on the keycap surface. And that is enough to help your finger find the center of the keycap. But yeah, I found that fascinating because I think I just thought it was flat. As for the trackpad, it feels good. Most importantly, I can put my palms on it whilst typing on a soft surface like my lap without getting false clicks. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Woo, babe. Yes, that's so good. I've used some pretty expensive thin keyboards in the past and when they flex, they usually click the trackpad accidentally. Um, but this one's quite rigid and you can see in the exploded view, it's got some infill on each side that no doubt helps reduce flex. And it's also great to see there's a large text bold font accessibility variant of this keyboard. And speaking of accessibility, the taskbar buttons are big when you're just using your finger, but the second you connect the keyboard, they shrink down as you would most likely now be using the trackpad. Only thing I'm unsure about is wear and tear because the Alcantara being on the bottom will still get dirty if you use it outside. And the top surface here seems to be like a painted plastic opposed to a dyed. So if it gets nicked, it most likely will peel off because it is a matte rubbery coating. But yeah, I really like this mechanism and actually really want to buy their Arc 2 mouse. It lays flat for travel, but then it can be bent into an arc for more ergonomic desktop use. I'm just waiting for a sale. But looking good and feeling good means nothing. If this computer can't even compute. You might be thinking, Cam, what do you even mean? Well, inside we have 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is good, 
but that's paired with a Snapdragon X Plus 8 core ARM based processor. It is phenomenally good at doing basic tasks with less power. The 38 watt hour battery inside gets up to 16 hours of video playback. And in Microsoft's test, their ARM based Surface laptop beats out Apple's ARM based M4 MacBook. And it's great to see in the Surface app, I can limit the battery charging to 80% to prolong the lifespan. So what's the catch? I hear you say. Um, well, pretty much every program ever made for Windows has been coded for x86 architecture, which means that these ARM-based processors are just emulating, like translating the code to the language that this processor understands. DaVinci Resolve, which is my video editing software, does have a Windows ARM version, but I'd say if you're editing anything more than a basic cut, you'd want 1080p footage. I downloaded Ableton Live 12, which is very popular music production software, and it just failed to install. Looking at the logs, we can see the required AVX2 processor function isn't supported by the Snapdragon processor, but this decade old minimum spec x86 Intel processor does. And so I went back to Ableton's website, grabbed Live 11 and that installed, but it means I can only use project files for Live 11 and earlier, not any of the new ones from 12. Thankfully, Bamboo Labs 3D Print Slicer and Plasticity, my 3D modeling software, seems to install and work fine. But I have seen reports online that Autodesk doesn't work yet. Because the confusing thing is that just installing something on this doesn't mean it will run as expected especially for gaming. See, on the plane, I enjoyed some Skater XL. I paired an Xbox controller via Bluetooth and just reduced the resolution and quality down until I got playable frames, but it worked. However, Session, my favorite skateboarding game, it just crashes. Now I could overlook certain software and games not working if I could install apps that were on my phone because these are ARM-based processors. This is an ARM-based processor, but you can't. You used to be able to install Android apps up until early last year through the Amazon App Store, but that's been discontinued. And so the only option for apps is through the Microsoft Store, and they are not anywhere near the same. For example, Netflix is just an iframe to their website. You can't download and cache movies for offline usage on a flight or a train trip. But it does have some neat software features that other devices can't do, thanks to its NPU. That's the neural processing unit. Now I like NPUs because that means you can do AI or machine learning based tasks local on the computer, not on someone's server, done here. The one in the Surface 12 Pro is a Qualcomm Hexagon chip. So that's 45 tops, 45 trillion operations per second done on this device. Uh, that could be simple as like blurring the background of webcam footage, or what they show me now is you can do natural language search with settings agent. Simply type, make my mouse bigger, and it will suggest to increase the cursor size. And then they showed us image recognition search, where you simply type what you're looking for, such as pink mug, and it will find images on your computer that contain that object. It's not perfect, but it's only gonna get better. And now there's Recall, which takes screenshots, they call snapshots, of your screen periodically and scans it for text and images to create a database to search later. The pitch I got for this was that you don't have to think how a computer thinks. So you can just say, show me the project where I was working on shoes and you get a list of images that had shoes. You can click on it, opens the program with that file. Microsoft tried to launch Recall last year, but it was recalled, which is ironic. And it came back now with more encryption, you have to authenticate with either your face or a password every time you open the Recall app. There's a sensitive data filter, website filters, application filters, or you can just purge a whole block of time from the database. But most importantly, it's now opt-in. So it's off by default when you buy a new computer, you have to manually turn it on. I would like to be able to uninstall it though. Finally, if you swipe the right hand side of the screen, it triggers click to do, which is a recall like snapshot of the screen with image and text recognition. Once again, that scan's done by the local MPU, but depending what option you pick from the click to run menu, it may go server side. And these NPU powered features can be found on Copilot Plus PCs. Also friendly reminder, if you use the Copilot AI assistant, you can go into settings, privacy and toggle off model training on your data. You have to do that in each device that you install the assistant on. Mate, I've had a lot of fun. Like learning about the design, some of the whys and the what's of this product, opposed to just raw performance, is like a nice change. 
However, that doesn't mean that there isn't those improvements that I kind of pointed out. Now for pricing of the Surface Pro 12 inch with a Snapdragon X Plus 8 core processor and 512 gig SSD, 1,699 Australian dollars. Total combo with a keyboard and slim pen is $2,153.95, which just puts this in such a weird situation. It's got amazing build quality, phenomenal design and battery life, but it can't install all of the apps that a normal iPad or Android tablet can, even though it looks like a tablet. And although it's running Windows 11, it can't install all the apps that an average Windows 11 device can install. The Windows software team have done a phenomenal job. Big brains, smart people, but it just isn't there yet. If it was, then it'd be a completely different story. But right now, a year later, with the Snapdragon um, chips, well, as you saw with Ableton, doesn't work. Games, they crash. It's not the same Windows experience that I'm used to, that I love, it's just not. With that being said, shout out to Lisa, Maddie, and Peggy. You made my trips seamless and action-packed. And a big thank you to the Microsoft engineers and designers that flew from Seattle to Sydney, Australia, leaving your family and friends and loved ones behind because I really appreciated your visit talking to us tech creators, it really made my day. Uh, and big thank you to Robin. I talked her ear off so much uh, that I even got memed by Lisa. I've heard of Cam talking Robin's <laughs> I just had so many questions and Robin was so knowledgeable, like really smart chick. Who knows, hopefully one day you and I can go tour where they actually make the hardware, see the hows, the whys, get more insights. Uh, if you liked this video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it so I can see you in the next one, which is right behind the camera. It's a 3D printing project that I've been needing to do. I'm gonna get onto it. Catch ya.